Have you often wondered or perhaps even worried about giving birth to a stillborn baby? In this video, you're going to hear Dr. Robin's very personal story about how she gave birth to a stillborn baby at around 28 or 29 weeks gestation. If you watch to the end, you're really going to understand why Dr. Robin is so very passionate about a mother not being separated from her baby in the following hours after birth. Guys, please do like and share this video and comment below so that it can reach as many women as possible worldwide. And if you haven't already, join our Facebook community so that you can further familiarise yourself with Dr Robin and her wonderful methods. Here's the lovely lady herself sharing her story. At five years after Joanne was born, I was pregnant again and another surprise pregnancy, but you know, that was okay. I was happy to be pregnant again. Uh, then this little baby was growing normally and then I had this uh, day where I was very unwell. I didn't know what was wrong with me. And being the nurse, of course, you diagnose yourself. And uh, I thought I had a urinary tract infection. I had this pain and I just didn't know what was going on and I had this urgency to go to the toilet. But as it turned out, I ended up with an, uh, my membranes were leaking. They weren't actually ruptured, but they were leaking. And this baby was about 28, 29 weeks, bordering be somewhere between 28 and 29 weeks because gestation was estimated, always estimated. It was never um, uh, from absolute conception. And so I kept leaking this lycra and then finally I got this very, very high temperature. It was very sick. So I went into hospital and, uh, uh, and I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know exactly what. But when I saw the first midwife, there was no fetal heart. There was no, no movement of my baby. So then I knew my baby was not alive. And in those days, they just did things. They didn't even ask you, you know, like, you got a two points, a two point soap and water enema. And, and with this little baby that was no longer alive, I got pethidine, I got opiates given to me, the worst thing that could have ever happened because it, it changed my whole ability to cope with giving birth to a stillborn baby. So then I get transferred to a labour ward and a whole lot of people around. Everybody's anxious um, because I'm giving birth to a stillborn baby. That was the hardest labour and birth of my babies. And, and the reason I think being is that the baby's not able to help you. There's no movement from the baby. There's no moulding of the head. The, the baby might have, the bones may have collapsed due to death, but it's much, much harder, much harder work to work with a little baby that's not actually negotiating and moving and doing the things it needs to do. And finally, um, I gave birth to this little baby and again, they took the baby. And I'm very anxious about why did they take my baby again? That's the third time they've taken my baby from me. And I asked for my baby and uh, they brought the baby back wrapped up, mummified in a little blanket all tied up and all I could see was the face held it up to me and I'm dazed with opiates now by the pethidines, you know, way in my system and all I can see is a little face and they tell me it's a baby girl. That was the last time I saw my baby. So that changed my whole, when I became a midwife, that changed my, influenced me immensely about taking babies off mothers. Don't dare take babies off mothers. Babies belong to mothers. They're meant to be with mothers. They're not meant to be separated. So I think that had a huge, huge influence on my ability to say strongly, no, 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 you don't do that. Anyway, um, this little baby I found out later, because the hospital hadn't completed the paperwork properly, I didn't find this out till later, that my baby was buried in a pauper's grove. I didn't even know what a pauper's was. Two policemen knocked on my door to tell me that if I didn't um, have the paperwork completed, my baby would be buried as a pauper. They had to come and tell me that. So I had to go and ask my mother what a pauper was. So she explained to me that's someone that's really poor and doesn't have any money, any assets in life. So um, 
So then I get another call from a tele on the telephone from another burly policeman. Big, big burly voice coming over saying, you know, you, you, you're almost out of time. Your baby's going to be buried a pauper because the paperwork's not completed. So my baby was buried a pauper because the hospital hadn't completed the paperwork correctly. My baby was buried in the, in the Melbourne Cemetery in the pauper's grave and I'm happy about that because I couldn't change that, can't change that. So I think that sent me into a spin um, for, for quite some time, but because of the, the support that I had from family and friends, I was able to get through that. My first um, deal at, my first time at dealing with it was presenting it at a big conference, at an Australian College of Midwives conference. And I can't remember, I think it was somewhere down Frankston Way in Melbourne, that conference, it's a long time ago now. And I think once I presented that, I was able to deal with that. I got on with life then. But that was my third experience. So for the women that have stillborn babies, there's a lot of, lot of things happen. And the worst thing you can do is to take a baby away from its mother, regardless of what it's like. If a baby has a congenital abnormality, the worst thing you can do is take a baby from its mother. So, and the system in those days is nowhere near as difficult as it is now in modern times. Even though the system had its problems, it was much, much easier than what it is now. And there wasn't the amount of intervention and interference in women's pregnancies, in their labours, in the births of their babies. There was not the trauma to their bodies that there is now. It's, it's, it's escalated over the, my career, escalated phenomenally. If this video resonates with you, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit the bell below so you don't miss any important updates. You can also continue to watch more of our videos in the playlist and to learn more about the Thompson Method, like I said, please do join our free Facebook community to further familiarise yourself with Dr Robin. My name is Chelsea Curley. Please remember that this is your body, your baby and your journey that we're talking about. I'll see you soon.